Who can tell me the name of one of the cube types of collisions? Cat. Um, perfectly inelastic. We have one that's called perfectly inelastic. Please notice that I've written perfectly parenthetically on the board, uh, and I'll talk about why that is in a little bit. The other type of collision that we're going to talk about today, William, is what? Is, uh, uh, elastic. Say again? Elastic. Elastic. We have to be very careful to enunciate when we say this. We have the concept of an elastic collision, and we have perfectly inelastic. No pencil, William? Seven. Please describe either an elastic collision or a perfectly inelastic collision. In other words, what happens during one of these collisions? John. Um, inelastic after they collide, they move back to the same position. I'm sorry, say that again? They move? They like move back to the original position. They don't actually have to move back to the original position, but they are going to bounce off of one another. That's the one word I'm going to use for it. So you have two objects that run into one another, and they're going to bounce off of one another. During a perfectly inelastic collision, we actually have the opposite of that. What is the opposite of bouncing off of one another? Cassidy? Um, they like move away. No, that would be the same as bouncing. Well, like, they, move, they come together at like the same blocks. So they stick together is the point here. So I have two words, bounce and stick, as descriptions for, um, basic descriptions for an elastic collision and a perfectly inelastic collision. Uh, Kat and Libby, why don't you guys move up front? You're all the way in the back and we have empty seats up here today, so why don't you move up front? It'll be much more fun. All right. The differences between these different types of collisions have to do with whether momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved. So, we first needed to identify if momentum is conserved during these different types of collisions. So, during an inelastic, I'm sorry, during an elastic collision where the two objects run into one another and bounce off of one another, is momentum conserved? Because? Yes. How do you know? I don't know what that all means. The question is, why do you know momentum is conserved during an elastic collision because where there's collision in it? And conservation of momentum applies to collisions. Remember, momentum is conserved during all collisions and explosions. So it doesn't matter what kind of collision we're calling it, momentum is going to be conserved. So yes is the answer. <coughs> is momentum conserved? Yes. Because it's a collision. That's all you need to know. You don't have to identify which type of collision. In other words, the difference between these two different types of collisions is really as to whether kinetic energy is conserved. And kinetic energy is conserved in one and is not conserved in the other. During which of these two collisions is kinetic energy conserved, please? Renee? Elastic. During an elastic collision, you do have conservation of kinetic energy. During a perfectly inelastic collision, you actually do not. So that is the difference between now, I have these two demonstration spheres to discuss the differences between the different types of collisions. They are from the catalog called Happy and Sad. So, we drop them. Two different collisions. Let's talk about this one first so that we can identify it. Nolan, is this one happy or sad? Happy. happy. Everyone thinks this one's happy. I don't know why. So we'll call this one happy, the other one we'll call sad. Happy. What type of collision does happy have with the lab table? Libby? Elastic. It, believe it or not, is not elastic. Initially, you would look at it and you would say it's elastic because they bounce, right? Clearly, the clearly happy bounces off of the lab table. Yet, this is not elastic because Kinetic energy is not conserved. How do I know kinetic energy is not conserved? Taku? It doesn't bounce back as high. It doesn't bounce back as high. If kinetic energy were conserved, it would hit the ground, or I'm sorry, hit the lab table at a certain velocity, but then it would recoil from the lab table at the exact same velocity and come up back to the same height. 
but it doesn't do that. You can see it doesn't come up to the exact same height. Not only can you see that kinetic energy isn't conserved, what other way can you tell? Wait. You can hear the sound. You can hear it. Remember, sound is that kinetic energy being converted over to sound. So we have kinetic energy. You can clearly see that it's not the same. And you can hear, because you can hear it, you can hear that kinetic energy being converted to sound. That means that the sphere is being compressed. And that means also that this is actually slightly hotter every time I bounce it because of internal friction. So this type of collision actually is neither elastic nor is it perfectly inelastic. This type of collision actually is, per, is inelastic. It's right between the two. So realize that elastic is, elastic is one extreme and perfectly inelastic is the other extreme. And in the middle, we have an inelastic collision where the two objects bounce off of one another, but kinetic energy is not conserved. Sad. What type of collision does SAD have with the lab table? Okay. Inelastic. Inelastic. Again, it's actually the exact same type of collision. It's just that in this one, we have more kinetic energy being converted over to heat and sound. And it's interesting that you can actually hear that. Listen to the difference between happy and SAD. SAD is actually louder because more energy is being converted from kinetic energy into heat and sound. Okay, so we have the extremes. Inelastic collision, perfectly inelastic collision, and then we have an inelastic collision. I'll try that one more time because the words are tough. We have elastic, perfectly inelastic, and then inelastic in the middle. It turns out that most collisions are actually inelastic. There are very few collisions that are actually elastic, where they bounce off of one another and the kinetic energy is conserved. Why? What does it take to cause an elastic collision? to have kinetic energy conserved. Uh, um, Mitch? No friction. Uh, it doesn't necessarily take no friction per se. Remember, friction has to do with conservation of energy, not conservation of momentum per se. Because? No conversion of the sound versions. Number one, you can't hear it. Number two, there can't be any deformation of the object because that will cause internal friction and it will heat up, right? So you have to have a collision where you don't hear it and there's no deformation of the objects. Is that possible on a macro level class? No, you actually cannot have this unless it's an atomic level. You can have atomics, uh, atoms and things colliding without actually running into one another. They don't quite run into one another, so they don't actually deform one another and there's no sound. We can get close on a macro level, but it's really, you can't actually have an elastic collision on a macro level. It's an ideal type of collision. <coughs> Right. As far as equations are concerned, we have conservation of momentum. That means we have mass 1 times velocity 1 initial plus mass 2 times velocity 2 initial is equal to mass 1 times velocity 2 final plus mass 2 times velocity 2 final. Assuming we have two objects, if we had more objects, we would just have more mass and velocity. This is, as far as you can go, if you have an elastic collision or where you have two objects that bounce off of one another. But if they stick together and it's perfectly inelastic, then on the final side, we're going to have <coughs> the same final velocity. Therefore, we can do that, which we've done already. Perfectly 